friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Madison or Dandelion here. Today we are talking about another highly requested topic. A question that I get asked so often. It's definitely up there with a lot of the other questions that I get asked. Uh, and that is, how do I write my own spells and rituals? How do I create my own? How do I go about that? What do I do? So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. And a quick side note before we get started on the topic, my channel members are currently voting on what the next deity spotlight is going to be. Right now, it is a three-way tie. <laughs> so the poll right now has four options and three of the options are all at the same percent. So if you wanna become a member and vote in that poll to decide which deity comes next, now is the time because it is at a three-way tie, a standstill right now. So if you wanna be able to say which deity I spotlight next, hit that join button below this video and go to the community tab of my channel page and vote in the poll to help me figure out which deity to do because right now they're all tied and I cannot decide by myself. That's why I ask you guys. <laughs> Another quick thing before we get into this topic is I actually offer this service on my website. I write spells and rituals for people. So if you're interested in having a spell or a ritual written by me, then you can visit my website, which is in the Dropbox down below and request this service from me. So if that interests you, then go to the Dropbox and click that link to be able to reach out to me for a personalized spell or ritual. First, it's important to know that when you're writing a spell or a ritual, there are no set rules. There's no, you know, blueprint that every single spell or ritual has to follow. It's all very personalized. It's all very unique to the individual and the purpose of the spell or the ritual. So I'm gonna be going through roughly some steps that you can go through yourself to write a ritual or a spell for yourself. But again, remember, there's no one blueprint or rule book. So if you don't like one of the steps or you wanna add a step or whatever, go right ahead. When you're sitting down to write a spell or a ritual, there are some questions you wanna ask yourself before you get to the nitty gritty of really writing the spell or the ritual. Uh, and the first question that you're gonna to wanna to ask yourself is what is this working for? What's the intention of this working? What's the desired outcome from this working? So maybe you're wanting to write a prosperity spell. Maybe you're wanting to write a cord cutting ceremony. Maybe you're wanting to write an offering ritual for one of your deities. Could be anything. Figure out what it is, what the purpose of it is, what the intention of it is, what the, what the point of it is, and what you wanna get out of it when it's done. The next question you wanna ask yourself is what kind of magic do I wanna utilize in this ceremony? Do you wanna use candle magic? Will it involve astral projection? Will it involve dream work? What will it involve? What kind of spiritual practice are you going to utilize? The next question you wanna ask yourself is when am I going to be doing this? When will I perform this ritual or spell? Will it be during the day? Will it be in the morning, in the evening, in the middle of the night? Will it be during the full moon, the waxing, the waning, the new moon? Will it be when a certain planet has aligned with another planet during a certain planetary event? Will it be um, during Pisces season, during Sagittarius season? Will it be a certain day of the week? Uh, you know, think about when you're gonna be doing this and write that down. The next question you wanna ask yourself is, will I be casting a circle? or what kind of protection will I be using for this spiritual working? So if casting a circle is in your practice, then you could say, yes, I'm gonna cast a circle at the beginning. Or if casting a circle is not something that resonates with you, not something you like to do, then you could utilize some other form of protection. Um, you know, what will I do at the, ask yourself, what will I do at the beginning of my spell to add some protection to myself? Will I, involve salt? Will I have a circle of salt? Will I have a bowl of salt on the altar? Will I use a spray that's infused with herbs that are good for protection? Will I wear protective crystals? You know, what will you do to protect yourself during this energy working? The next question, so the fifth question you're going to ask yourself is what kind of materials will you need? What kind of tools will you need? So you want to ask yourself what tools, what ingredients will I be using? 
So will I be using flowers? Will I be using herbs? Will I be using stones, crystals? Will I be using my athame, my cauldron? Do I need to incorporate a certain color for the spell? You wanna ask yourself this question so you can be prepared to write this ritual or spell and then perform it. So you need to know, you know, do I wanna use plants? Do I wanna use crystals? Do I wanna use a certain kind of water? Do I wanna make sure I have rainwater or make sure I have river water or whatever it is? This is also where you wanna ask yourself, am I going to be calling on any energetic beings? So are you going to be calling on a deity? Are you going to be calling on a spirit guide? Are you going to be calling on a past self, a past life that you've had? Are you going to be calling on a deceased loved one, an ancestor? So think about all these things, not only what materials and what tools will I need, but who or what will I be calling on to be present in this space with me? And the sixth and final question you're gonna ask yourself before we get into writing the ritual or the spell is how will you be putting energy into the spell? How will you charge the ritual or spell? How will you raise the energy and then send it out? Could be through offering, could be through chanting or meditation or mantra, could be through instruments, dance, and I have a whole video on my channel here on YouTube about how to raise the energy of a space for ritual and spell work. So that's linked down below and above if you wanna check that out. But ask yourself, how will I be raising the energy of the space? How will I be charging this working so it's for the greatest and highest good? So now that we've asked ourselves all these questions, we have a gist for what we wanna do, we're gonna get into actually writing the spell and ritual. So these first three steps are less optional. They're kind of standard for ritual and spell work, but we're gonna go through them. So like every single spell and ritual that you ever do, you're gonna start first step when you're writing your spell is gonna be cleanse the space. So first thing, choose your method for cleansing, any kind of method you want, besom, uh, crystals, smoke cleansing, saining, washing yourself physically with water, however you wanna cleanse. Cleanse the space and yourself. So that's always gonna be the first thing that you're writing in your ritual and spell work. And then the second step is always going to be some form of protection. So it's either going to be cast your circle or spray your protection spray, adorn your, protect, wear your protective crystals, um, circle of salt, salt on the altar, some form of protection. Step number three, the final kind of mandatory step is to honor the indigenous peoples of the land that you're on. So this is specific to people who live in colonized lands, colonized countries. So if you live in a place where the land was not originally inhabited by your people, the people you descend from, <laughs> your ancestors, um, it's important to start every single ritual or spell, any kind of magical working by honoring and thanking the indigenous peoples of the land. So that's gonna be step number three. Um, you can do this by looking up, um, I will link in the Dropbox the website that I use to look up the different tribes and indigenous groups um, of different areas. It'll tell you their names. So I utilize that a lot when I'm in areas that aren't my home because I of course know the indigenous tribes of the land that I live on, but when I'm in other places, I need to look it up. So I'll have that linked down below for you. But the way you can do this is simply by out loud saying that you honor and respect the indigenous peoples of the land that you are currently on. You honor that it is their land. You invite them to be present for the ritual ceremony spell. Any kind of way you wanna word it, um, just make it nice, you know, appreciate them, show them some love. They deserve it. They deserve a lot more than just that. Um, but yeah, it's important to do that if you're on land that was taken from the indigenous people that it rightfully belongs to. So now moving into the fun part of writing your ritual or spell. So step four is the big one. This is where you're doing most of the bulk of the writing. Um, so this is where you're going to write out the words you're going to say and the actions you're going to perform. So are you going to... You know, we've talked about this before in some of my videos, but some people like to speak out loud. Other people like to keep it more internal and just use their um, their mind, their inner voice. So are you going to be saying words out loud? Are you going to be saying words silently to yourself? Um, are you going to be using mostly visualization and not so much words? Are you more of an image person? Um, or maybe this specific spell or ritual calls for more of a visualization and less of a words usage. Are you going to use bodily gestures and movement to uh, enhance the spell? Are you going to include music and song, dance, instrument playing? Um, 
Are you going to be uh, rhyming in the spell that you write. A lot of the time I like to add a bit of a rhyme and a rhythm to the spells and the rituals that I write. This helps me to memorize them, but it also helps me, um, it really does feel more powerful when the words sit nicely in your mouth. <laughs> But yeah, so think about how you want the words to sound, if you want it to have a certain rhythm to it, um, if you want your spell or ritual to sound kind of poetic, or you can just, you know, write it to write it. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It's all personal preference. You know, will you be repeating things? Will you be doing a certain action a certain number of times or saying something a certain number of times? What, again, what tools or materials will you need? So is there a certain herb? Is there a certain color candle? Is there a certain piece of fabric you're going to need? Is there, you know, a certain crystal you're going to need? Or do you want to collect flower petals beforehand? Think about anything that you might want to include, any material, any tool, and write as you're going through writing the words you'll say and the actions you'll use, you'll write in order First I will say this, and then I will perform this action, and then I will say this, and then I will perform this action, and then I'll perform this action, and then the spell is complete. So write down everything you're going to do, the words you're going to say, and the actions you're going to perform. And remember, if you're not a words person, don't include words. If you're not an actions person, lean more on words. Make it work for you. This is for you. It's your personal spell it's your it's your personal practice it's your spiritual practice so only you know what will work best for you what resonates best for you so that's where you want to decide which things do i want to lean on and which things do i want to move away from because if you feel good as you're casting the spell or ritual it will end well and you'll have a good outcome if you're feeling like oh this isn't resonating with me i don't like to speak out loud but other people speak out loud so i feel like i should speak out loud then you're going to be second guessing yourself and questioning and not feeling as good while you're doing it and it's going to impact the the power of the working so you want to feel good make it your own make it something that you can really resonate with and sink into and enjoy the sc the spell casting or the ritual performing um the ceremonial practice of it. You want to be enjoying it and present in the moment and not thinking, now I have to do this. You don't have to do anything. It's your personal spiritual practice. So make it work for you. And if you're calling on any energetic beings in this step, you're going to write when you're calling on them, how you're calling on them. So in addition to writing um, any words you're going to say and any actions you're going to perform, you're also going to write when you're going to invoke or evoke, depending on what you're doing, um, a certain energy being. So if you're calling on a deity, you're going to write that in. Um, and again, with calling on an energy being, you can word it however you want. So really get creative with that. Make it your own. It should be personal because you're calling on them. You know, think about it like it's a friend. So call on this energy being with respect, um, but also call on them in a personal way, in a way that is um, warm and loving. And if you're Wiccan, Usually at the end of a spell or a ritual, we will announce that it is done by saying, it is my will, so mote it be. So this announces, I've done it, and it is, because I've done it. So you can use that phrase, um, and you don't have to be Wiccan to use that phrase. That's just a generally Wiccan phrase. Um, but if that phrase doesn't resonate with you, reword it to be what you want it to be and mean what you want it to mean but say something to the effect of that say something to the effect of the spell's complete i send it out into the universe it is done it is my will it is done something along those lines so the next step in writing your ritual is going to be a thank you and an honoring so you're going to thank and release anyone and anything that's present so if you cast a circle this is where you're going to release the circle and thank the four directions, the four watchtowers, the four elements for watching over you and keeping you safe during this magical practice. Uh, if you called on a deity or any kind of energy being, you're going to thank them for being present and release them. Uh, and then after that, you are going to ground yourself. So right into your ritual or spell, whatever form of grounding you're going to be doing. So it could be go outside at the end of the magical working, un unless you're all or maybe you're already outside performing the working. Put your feet in the grass, lay down in the grass. Um, could be a visualization of you with roots down into the earth, growing tall into the sky like a tree. Um, could be you're going to do some kind of yoga practice after to ground yourself 
Could be you're gonna do some mundane tasks after to ground yourself, or you're going to t eat food when you're done, or drink water when you're done to ground yourself. So write in there at the end that you're gonna do some form of grounding at the end to bring yourself back into this physical plane. And once you've done that, you have your spell or ritual completely written out. So that one step is really the bulk of it. And that's where I can't really walk you through it. You really just have to feel it out. You know, write down all the things you're gonna say and the actions you're gonna perform and um, really make it your own with the wording that you use and the way you go about it. So those are the basic steps for writing your own spell or ritual. Remember, if you want me to help you out, I offer this service on my website, so hit that link down below to be able to request that from me. Remember, your spells and rituals don't have to look like anyone else's. They're for you, and they should represent you. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future content, and hit that thanks button to show a little bit of extra support for my channel. It's so, so appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Blessed be.